Neil, how does the sweep, the playoff sweep, change your view of the of the team and the season? It doesn't change anything about the season. I, I think we've got to bifurcate those two things to a certain degree. Um, you know, we lost four games coming in to the playoffs, and that didn't change everyone's overall outlook on a macro level. Um, you know, the, I think the playoffs brought a couple of issues to bear in terms of, you know, teams that can go small. Um, you know, I think those are some things we need to address. But, you know, playoff, playoff series are always going to illustrate um, – you know, deficiencies, right? That's what coaches do. They get to play you four different times. They find your weaknesses. And, you know, we, we'll address those in the offseason. Um, you know, regardless whether we lost, we got swept, we lost 4-3, we get into the second round, nothing's going to go unexamined in the organization. It's just a matter of, um, I think this one was so extreme, I don't want to overreact to one unfavorable matchup in a team that just played outstanding basketball. Um, you know, you, you just can't do that, Joe. You just can't react to, well, now we have to overreact to how, when we play this style of basketball. So, look, we're going to do everything we can to upgrade the roster like we always do, um, but we're also not going to lose sight of the success we had throughout the course of the season and the growth that we had. And I think you have to look at it three way. I think you look at the regular season where we had great success. Um, we had the third seed, which is the highest this organization has been seeded in two decades. I think the postseason couldn't have been worse. So, you know, I mean, I don't know that you can even have a happy medium that you can, I don't think you can even look at it as one consistent theme. I, I think you really have to look at them separately. And I think, you know, there's a lot of positives we need to take away from the regular season. And then there's a lot of issues we need to address based on the result of, you know, the very abbreviated postseason. But I don't even know that the postseason honestly was long enough to blend it in with the other 82 games. This idea of, you know, sweeping, where were, where were all these people that wanted sweeping changes 10 days ago? Where were they? They were the ones, you know, bouncing off the walls in the Moda Center when we had the third seed for the first time since 1999-2000. So it's our job, Joe, to be measured and not overreact. Because when you overreact is when you make mistakes. Nobody thinks this roster is a finished product. Everybody understands it is a work in progress. But it's a work in progress. But you know, relative to people that back in December were complaining we weren't even going to make the playoffs and we were in purgatory because we weren't going to make the playoffs and we weren't going to pick high enough and right that that was the rallying cry. Then it was oh my God, well they're going to blow the third seed because they're going to lose all these games down there. They're not even going to get home court advantage. They overreacted to that. And you know what? If the series goes six or seven, if game one goes differently, when we have the ball down one, like. Who knows where this series goes? But it didn't. But again, you don't take four games and overreact and diminish what you accomplished over 82 games. The foundation is built during the regular season. There are always ex extraneous factors that go into a playoff series. And look, we're the first ones out. So this will be heightened. And there'll be over an over amount of attention paid to this series until other teams start going out. and then. They'll all need sweeping changes. Does how you guys finish this regular season set a new bar for the team or expectations? Is look, the, look, the bar is always the same. You know, um, you know, you're trying to be a factor in the playoffs. You're trying to be, you know, a team that can advance in the playoffs and see what happens. Um, and you're trying to put the best team possible on the floor. And you're trying to do that while growing, not just looking for help externally, but growing from within. Um, you know, I thought this was the most competitive roster we've had in the three years since we kind of entered into this rebuild. Um, you know, I thought Damian showed great leadership, uh, you know, throughout the course of the year. I think we probably had more ebbs and flows this season than we did in the first two years. Because the first two years, we just started off really slow and made runs late, right? And it was kind of almost two distinct seasons. This one was up and down throughout. We had to face a lot of adversity throughout the year. Um, and, you know, I think sometimes people get too high and they also get too low. And when all is said and done, you know, weeks down the road, we'll look back and realize we lost in the first round. And whether it was 4-3 to three or 4 nothing isn't going to change the fact that in the regular season, a lot of the teams that are playing in the playoffs right now, we either swept, split with, beat, and we'll realize how competitive we were. One of the things I think I'm, I'm disappointed with from a narrative standpoint from this whole year that nobody picked up on was this. How important 
the quality of your players and building a team is to winning and losing basketball games. Everybody wants to look in a vacuum at specific players. This player, this player, this player, his numbers, his numbers, his numbers. And what nobody looked at was the chemistry, the camaraderie, the teamwork, the way this group stayed together. We'd lose three or four in a row. They never fractured. It frustrated guys in the media because you'd ask Dame or you'd ask CJ, they said, we're fine, we're fine. And nobody wanted to believe that we were fine. And yet somehow we ended up with 49 wins and we're the third seed in the Western Conference. We were fine. They believed it. They're the ones that have to believe, and they believe in each other, and they elevate each other. It's one of the things we talked about with Dame's leadership. Dame's great ability from a leadership standpoint is to get guys to elevate their play to a level they can play at by increasing everybody's level of play 5, 10, 15 percent because of the empowerment he gives them in aggregate adds another player, another impact player. And I think that's the hardest thing at times is, you know, this isn't NBA 2K. Not the teams with across the board the highest profile names on their teams aren't necessarily the best teams. And it comes down to coaching and culture and organization and team building and character. And that's what you saw during the ebbs and flows of our year that, that it never fractured in here ever. Not once. You never heard one story about it fracturing relationships player to player, player to coach, the organization, organization to coach, ever. Not once. You never heard that. And that's what kept everybody together. And that bond is why even losing in four will give us something to build on instead of something to regret. Have you spoken with Paul? Sorry. Sorry. Have you spoken with Paul since the season ended? And what was his message? Yeah, I was with Paul last night. What was his message? His message was we had a great regular season. He was proud of the way we competed. He, he was proud of the fact that even last night when we got down 15, we never stopped fighting. But based on the regular season, we had larger aspirations than a first round playoff exit and we need to find a way to get better. Neil, obviously you're very positive about, despite this sweep that the team just endured, what gives you so much optimism about this roster or, or this new place? You know, I think the growth, Joe. You know, um, you know, like I mean, look, last we had an eight-game improvement over last year. Um, I think if you asked anybody, and we gave some games away this year. I mean, I don't even know that the the record is a hundred percent reflective. You know what I mean of what it was capable of? Because we, you know, we did have some ebbs and flows and lost some games that I think, if you look back on the schedule, you would have, you know, you would have checked off as, as wins. Um, and then we also won some games. I don't think anybody expected us to win, but. I think when we look at how competitive we are with the teams that were in our conference, that were in our division, um, that are playing at a really high level right now and how we performed against them, um, knowing internally what these guys, you know, the, the amount of work that they put in. And I think more than anything, the biggest question mark I think we've all had that goes beyond whether or not we have two guards in our backcourt under 6'3", you know, would Nurk become a player or anything else? The biggest question was always, can this group, as constructed, have an impact defensively? And I think from a coaching standpoint, from a player commitment standpoint, to get buy-in for guys that, quite honestly, like other than, other than Farouk and maybe Mo, are really guys that probably came into the league as offensive players. To get that kind of buy-in from a, an individual and team concept that that's, what, that's why we, we did play so well on the road until this series, because the defense traveled. And I don't know that, you know, I mean, look, I think the coaches believed, but I don't know that we believed that we could, with this group, have a top 10 defense for the entire NBA season. And we did, and I think there were even guys looking at it, analytics-based, you know, guys looking at it back in November, December, wondering if it was sustainable or if it was a byproduct of a soft beginning of the schedule. And it was. And when you can be in the top 10 all year over an 82-game schedule with, with, with a predominantly offensive-oriented roster, it's a testament to the job the coaches did. And it's also, you know, kudos to the players that they were able to adapt a totally different mindset as two-way guys as opposed to just trying to outscore people on the other end of the floor.